In this video, I'm going to be talking about Coulomb's Law. I'll be giving you some tips on how to effectively and accurately use your calculator to get the correct answers. And then I'll also give you some tips about how to solve different variations of Coulomb's Law as well. So for Coulomb's Law, we have the constant k, which is always 9 times 10 to the ninth power. And then in addition, you have q1 and q2, which is the charge of one object and the charge of another. And then you have r, which is your separation distance. All right, so you basically have three numbers in your numerator. The k can basically be placed up here. And then you have a single value that's squared in your denominator in order to solve for the force. Okay, so for the most simplistic version of using Coulomb's law would basically be just plugging in two charges, a separation distance, and then solving for f. So say, for example, I have two charges. One is 5 times 10 to the negative eight coulombs, and the other one is four times 10 to the negative seven coulombs. And then we have the constant of nine times 10 to the ninth, that it's always there. And then we get a separation distance, we'll say of 0 0.02, which is always squared. So in addition, you would want to wrap your entire numerator in parentheses. Okay, so depending on the calculator you're using, there's some different approaches you may wanna take. Um, I would uh, suggest um, the first approach that I'm going to mention. So there is a double E button, which means times 10 to the blank power. Okay, on most TI um, calculators that are graphing calculators, you would hit the second button and then you would hit the comma. Okay, it depends on the model, but I believe most of them you hit second and then comma and you'll see this double E button. And then um, actually for cell phone calculators, they usually do have the double E button when you turn it sideways. And then for a lot of scientific calculators, they might actually also have that double E button too. Obviously, there's a lot of models, so they're going to vary a bunch. Okay, so I would highly recommend using that double E button. So then if you want to type in 9 times 10 to the ninth, you would type in 9. You would hit the double E button. And then you would hit 9 again. Okay, you don't have to hit a multiplication symbol. You don't have to raise anything to a power. On the actual calculator itself, it'll show itself as 9, 1 capital E, and 9. So that means 9 times 10 to the ninth power. Okay, now can you type in 9 times 10 and raise it to the ninth power? Sure, of course you can, and you will get the correct answer. I just choose to use it this way because there's less of a chance that I'm going to make errors with um, the multiplication symbol or, or the for the exponent, um, it maybe saves me half a second of time, whatever the case is, it seems a little bit more simple and efficient to me. So I definitely will put in that way. Same thing with these, I'll put five, hit the double E button and then negative eight, four, double E button, negative seven, and then so on. Okay, so that is my number one tip for plugging them into the calculator. My second tip is if I'm solving for force and I have to do this whole thing, I usually won't put the entire thing into my calculator. What I'll normally do is I'll just put in the numerator and then press enter. And if I just put in the numerator, I get 0 0.00018 or 1 1.8 times 10 to the negative fourth. Okay. And then from there, I would divide that by 0 0.02. And then just because the formula looks like this, I wrote 0 0.02 squared. Um, but actually, if I were to put in my calculator, I would just square it within the parentheses, just like that. Okay, so then my calculator is not going get, to get confused because it just has one number divided by another one. And it's not trying to figure out all these um, 
different values all together divided by this one. Okay, that's just my preference. You can totally put in everything up top here, wrap the entire numerator in parentheses, and then divide it by the separation distance squared, and you will get the correct answer. Okay, so I like to break up steps so that if I forget a parentheses or any little part of it, um, most likely um, I'll have that covered by doing separate steps like that. And then after I divide them out, I will get a final answer of 0 0.45 newtons. All right, so... Those are my main piece of advice as far as typing it into the calculator efficiently and accurately. Now, let's talk a little bit about some variations. Now, if you're just solving for force, it doesn't require any algebra, just carefully plugging things into the calculator so that you get your final force of 0 0.54 newtons, or excuse me, 0 0.45 newtons in this case. You may also be asked for the separation distance or the charge. Um, in that case, I kind of treat it just like a... set up where I'm going to be doing some cross multiplying. Okay, so for example, if I'm asked to solve for the separation distance, all I do is I would cross multiply these two and then finish off by square rooting my value. Okay, obviously there's a lot more steps with like plugging these sorts of things into the calculator to get them correct. Um, but Algebra wise, all you really need to do is cross multiply the force and your R squared, and then your force will drop underneath here. And then once you do K times Q1 times Q2 in your calculator, and then you would press enter to maybe get the numerator there and then divide it by the force and then finish off by square rooting it to get your R value. Okay, one more scenario. If you were looking for a Q value, Okay, again, I think about it in terms of cross multiplication. So say, for example, you're looking for this Q over here. So you have one Q value, you always have your K, you have a separation distance, and you have the force. I also think about it in terms of cross multiplication. I'll take this R squared and cross multiply it up and over. And then I would take the product of these two and then cross that underneath it. Okay, so again, I like to put it in as smaller steps, so I don't have to put too much into the calculator. So I'm going to square my R and then multiply it by my force, and that will give me my entire numerator. And then I'll take my K value times one of the other charges, um, multiply those two, and then put that in the denominator to eventually divide these two values, and then that will give me my Q2. So... Um, main points that I want to go over is, as I said before, I would highly suggest using this double E button. And you want to make sure that when you put numbers into your calculator, you use a lot of parentheses because this is a single value. So it has a number, a multiplication symbol, another number, something raised to an exponent, but really it's just one really small value. So you want to tell the calculator that all of these are separate things. So you want to make sure you use a lot of parentheses um, in that process. And as I said, I kind of like to break up the numerator and the denominator part so I don't have to put in too much at once. And then here's those couple tips about how to scoot things around using cross multiplication to solve for other values. So I hope that was helpful in helping you understand and calculate different values for Coulomb's Law. Thank you for watching and listening.